In this video, we're going to go over gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is a very common laboratory technique used in labs, and it is used to separate molecules by size and charge. Now, from the name, we know that there's going to be a gel. The gel is made of a polymer that forms pores of various sizes. Common polymers include agarose as well as polyacrylamide. For LAMCAT, it doesn't really matter uh, which one they use, but in the research lab, it does matter. Now, the purpose of forming these pores of various sizes is that you have this gel, which essentially is this matrix. And in order for molecules to move through the gel, they have to pass through all of these different pores. And as it turns out, larger molecules move through the pores more slowly than smaller molecules. So essentially, this gel has a very important role in separating molecules by size. Now, the second part of separating by charge is that gel electrophoresis uses an electrolytic cell. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see the setup of gel electrophoresis. So you have the electrolytic cell where on one end it's positive and on the other end it is negative. The negative end, since it's an electrolytic cell, must be the cathode and the positive end has to be the anode. So when you have the gel placed inside this electrophoretic chamber, you can see that there are wells on one end of the gel. The samples are going to be introduced or added to these wells. And then the gel electrophoresis machine is going to be turned on and the molecules are going to migrate through the gel according to their size and charge. So of course, positively charged molecules are going to move towards the cathode, which is negatively charged, and negatively charged molecules are going to move towards the anode, which is positively charged. In the situation where all of your molecules have the same charge, such as DNA, that has a negative charge, that means all of the molecules are going to migrate towards the anode, which has a positive charge. Since they're all moving in the same direction, the separation is achieved by the pores in the gel. So as you can see in the diagram, smaller molecules are going to move through the gel faster, and larger molecules are going to move through the gel more slowly. Okay, so this is the basics of how gel electrophoresis works. For the MCAT, we need to know a little bit more details about different gels that are used to separate proteins. There is what is called native page, SDS page, and reducing SDS page. They're all similar in that they all incorporate gel electrophoresis. So first of all, native page. So PAGE stands for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So the polyacrylamide is just referring to the polymer that is being used to make the gel. So it's just gel electrophoresis, but under native conditions. So what I mean by this is in native PAGE, you are separating proteins in their native conformation by size and charge. So that means you're just taking your protein sample, you're putting it in the gel, and you're going to go ahead and separate them. Now, proteins in their native conformations, they're going to be folded in different shapes and forms. And the way that a protein is folded is going to affect how it migrates through the pores. Certain shapes and forms are going to be able to migrate through the pores more easily than others. Another important thing is that proteins are not like DNA. All DNA molecules have a negative charge because of the sugar phosphate backbone. Protein molecules can have a positive charge or a negative charge. So in native page, if you have some positive proteins, they're going to move towards the negatively charged cathode, whereas negatively charged proteins are going to move towards the positively charged anode. So native page for that purpose, because it, there's multiple factors going on. The size and shape of the protein from its folding, the charge of the protein, there are multiple factors that affects how proteins are stated are separated in native page. So for that reason, it's not used as often as these two right here, SDS page and reducing SDS page. In SDS page, you're running gel electrophoresis, but the solution and the proteins have been exposed to a chemical agent called sodium dodecyl sulfate. 
If you take a look at this diagram, you're going to see the structure of sodium dudesyl sulfate. It is a detergent. So it is a detergent. It means that it's an amphipathic molecule. One side of the molecule is nonpolar, and the other side of the molecule is polar with charges. Now, what SDS does to proteins is, as a detergent, it will bind to and denature the protein. And when it binds to the protein, it's actually going to surround the proteins with SDS molecules. It's going to confer a negative charge. And you can be best see how this works in this diagram, where you can see initially the protein is folded and it has some positive charges and some negative charges. So the overall charge depends on that balance. When you expose proteins to SDS, the protein becomes denatured. So now they all have the same shape. They're just a straight chain. And you can see, since they're also covered by SDS, all of the proteins will now have a negative charge. Now, the benefit of surrounding the proteins with SDS and giving them a negative charge is that now when you run the gel, all of the proteins are going to migrate in the same direction towards the positively charged anode. And since charge is the same for all the proteins, the SDS page allows you to separate proteins by size only. So this is a good technique to determine the sizes of different protein molecules. All right, so what's reducing SDS page? Well, this is simply SDS page under reducing conditions. So in addition to adding sodium dodecyl sulfate, you'll add a reducing agent such as beta mercaptoethanol, and this is going to break the disulfide bonds. Now, for a number of proteins, this isn't going to make a significant difference to what the gel looks like. Uh, in some cases, the disulfide bonds might make the proteins unfold more completely so they can migrate through the pores more easily, so they'll travel a little farther than before. But a very useful use of reducing SDS page is for investigating quaternary structures that are held together by disulfide bonds. So in this diagram, you can see a reducing SDS page gel that was run. And you can see there's two columns, one column under non-reducing conditions or regular SDS page, and the other under reducing conditions, or we can call that reducing SDS page. You can see in the non-reducing conditions, there are two bands. And the two bands have one at a lower molecular weight, and one that is at a higher molecular weight. The higher molecular weight is actually twice the molecular weight. And that's because this is a protein that can uh, have monomers associate to form dimers. The dimers would be a form of quaternary structure. And what you can see in the reducing conditions column is that the band for the dimers is gone. So this essentially indicates that these dimers in this protein are held together by disulfide bonds, and these monomers cannot associate to form dimers in reducing conditions. Okay, so those are the different types of pages, native page, SDS page, as well as reducing SDS page.